Yeah, Kermit Weeks here, Fantasy of Flight, and I am out in the LA Basin. Uh, came out uh, earlier for the uh, Living Legends of Aviation, and it was pretty cool. Uh, Steve Hinton, who actually test flew the A26, was my date for the night, so that was pretty cool. Got a chance to hook up with him. And I am about to hit the Chino Airport to check on the A26. Um, I did not. I was not there when they did the test flight, but uh, they had a bit of a problem. Everything was running great, but they took off, and uh, the uh, soon after takeoff, the gear came up, and both canopies opened up. Apparently, the early airplanes had some issues, and after the fact, we learned that the previous owner who had worked on the airplane had the same problem. So anyway, it would have been nice to know, but. Uh, Anyway, so I'm going to come out and check on the progress. Uh, they've been doing a lot of little detailed painting since then. Uh, and uh, we shall see what the progress is. There's the Chino Airport sign. There's the Yanks Air Museum over there. And uh, I'm currently enjoying the uh, nice, fresh aroma of Chino cow pastures. So anyway, um, so I'm going to go check uh, Carl and Tony, see how it's going. Still working a little bit on the nose art, uh, you know, which uh, just lasts a little bit. A lot of it's put on there. Apparently there was a lot of detail. Carl was telling me where they had to do, uh, you know, little stenciling and things like that. There were some little minor things. And they ended up, you know, changing the seals and coming up with a, like there was an AD on the, the canopy deal there, so hopefully that's all fixed. So anyway, so I saw Steve at uh, Living Legends of Aviation. I don't know if we're going to get a chance to watch something fly while we're here. We shall see. I told Carl I was going to be here. Let's see what their number is. Uh, Aero Trader 112. Hey, Carl Kermit. Yes, sir. Good deal. I'm at the gate. Three. And I understand the airplane's outside. It was raining a little bit last week, but uh, it's a very, a very, very nice day today, as you can see it like that. And, uh, shall go see what there is to see. Baby. We still have to do the uh, rest of the nose art on the side. So let me see what we got here. Take an extra camera. Lock the door. My man, what's happening? Oh, we do edit them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to put you in a tuxedo, actually. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, good, good, good. What's going on? Well, there she be. There she looks. Oh, my God. Pretty yeah. cool. Get Tucker out here. He ran it yesterday for you. Oh, awesome. Great. Yeah, so I saw Steve uh, a couple of nights ago. Yeah, he stopped in this morning. Oh, yeah, good. good. He's uh, hurt his back. Okay. A little bit yesterday, but he said uh, no big deal. probably by Wednesday he might be feeling okay. He's going to yeah. be up in Santa Maria tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, He'll okay. be here all day today. Yeah. And, uh, no big morning, deal. So. Yeah, some point I want to go over and see what's going on. Where's the Rod's Connie? So they've been working on Over it. in the uh, Lockheed hangars across the airport. Oh, 
Oh, okay, cool. So to get there, you have to go out. Oh, no big deal. I mean, you know, maybe you go go see it. And, you know, for some reason, the the, uh, 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 Yanks guys want to talk to me or something. So I'll go down there and just go see what they want to do. Okay. So, cool. Hey, man, Kermit. Tucker. Tucker, yeah, yeah, yeah. We met before? We have. We yeah, had, okay. It's been a couple years. Yeah, I know. There you go. So, <laughs> well, that's. Get to be a hero again a second time here. Yeah, yeah. good, good, good. Well, it's looking good. So, so does uh, so does Jerry? Jerry knows I'm here. Uh, I'll call her and tell her you are physically here. Yeah, okay, cool. Good, good, good. So, we're still working on the nose art, which uh, we're not going to show anybody. It's going to be a surprise to a special friend of mine. So we got the, uh, at some point we can sit in there and talk about the canopy thing. Did you mainly just like put bigger seals in them and then there was some kind of a lock? Um, there's a so there's a latch that will come down and it will physically lock the handle. In the oh, opposition. it locks, so did the handle pop and then the, the handle vibrated down at, at, at power. Wow. And so it eventually gra gradually came down and then it just sprung open. Okay, there okay. Was so a later model mod that had another uh, lever up there in the further up in the center of the canopy rail. Right. And uh, this airplane didn't have it because it's a pretty early number. I'll be darned. But apparently when uh, Challenge Publications had it and had the same problem, they didn't realize they didn't there was the fix. So what did they end up doing and why did we never have a problem? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I'll be darned. Well, the huh. trouble is the canopies were on and off this thing several times, you know, with the plexiglass. And right, stuff like right, that. So, right. Uh, there was something going on. I'll be darned. Plexiglass looks all great. Is this stuff that y'all did new? Uh, I think we did put Yeah, yeah it's, it's all new. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So so you said there was a lot of little detail. Well, all these little stats. Yeah. Unbelievable. So they marked all the... How many were there, Tucker? Uh, there, 200 and something. Well, there's 250 numbers within themselves just in the individual panels right and you still have um, the you know the y drain valves and you know the the, the toe stencils and, oh, yeah. and there's probably at least at least 350 to 400 stencils on this airplane oh my god leveling lugs for example you know just stuff like that right it's, it, it's everywhere but that, that, go, that goes inside the bomb doors open correct stencil here that says fire extinguisher on the inside. Right. And yeah, that's something that uh, you and I will talk about depending okay. on what kind of fire extinguisher you want to put in this airplane. Okay. It's probably the big bottle. But uh, yeah. Awesome. There's no de-icer on this, is it? No. Uh, I mean so 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 did they have a thing on the front? Is that what it was? Okay. There would have been boots. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Cool. Did you guys shoot this inside? Uh, outside. I mean, outside or just outside here? Kind of outside, right here. Okay. okay. Yeah. Cool. That's the lower uh, thing for the turret here, which you have to put open. We'll get inside. Look at all this cool stuff here. And the upper one. This periscope goes out the top too, so the guy looks through the little D there. Looks to me like we need to get a new little uh, eye cushion. Uh, yes, the rubber boots disintegrating in the sun. <laughs> it's, I don't know how old that is. It's years upon years old. Unreal. Like company to, uh, well, we might have one of the other sighting stations. I don't know. So what's the, uh, what's that, De decacent or what do I call it? Desicant. Desicant, yeah. What's that for? Moisture absorber so that the site doesn't uh, fall oh, down. Oh, for, for the, the site. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, That's the cool. Yeah, there's an electric motor that pumps air through it. Check out that armor plate. Oh, so fire extinguisher that goes here? Uh, actually, fire extinguisher would mount over here in this tray. Okay. That is your relief canisters for the gunner. So that's, he's got something to pee in. Oh, there we go, cool. Well, good. I'm glad it's got two. I probably need like four or five, but that depends on the mission. <laughs> oh. cool. Is there just one battery or they got one on each side? One on each cell. Yeah. I'm 
surprised the, uh, why's all this chipping? I mean, there's paints chipping and stuff, you know, wouldn't it, didn't all this stuff get done new at some point? The hurricane, y'all picked it up about a year after Andrew, so say 93, oh my God, yeah. 1,003, 13, 20, 30 freaking years. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there's that little bit of reading. Yeah, huh. Oh, so you don't have any of the gun packs on yet. I always do that after the flight. Yeah, I agree. Because there's no sense putting extra drag on. I it. totally agree, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, it'll be interesting, too, to see how the airplane speed goes without them and then put them on and just see if it makes any difference. But the bottom line is, so what? Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm not going to go on there, but yeah. In case I race at Reno, I mean, is that wanna, what it is? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of our uh, B-25 customers at one time was complaining about putting a turret on because it's going to slow me down five miles an hour and it's going to burn 10 gallons more gas. Oh my and I said, God. well, if you can't afford 10 gallons of gas, you probably shouldn't be flying this airplane. No, there you go. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, so we've never been completely concerned about driving. Cool. Have you have you done anything with the eight-gun nose at all? Uh, we started on the island. Yeah, okay. And, and, and yeah, at some point, you know, I'd like to do the, the glass nose too with the Norden and stuff, just to put them on display side right, by right. side. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's kind of weird walking outside and seeing the airplane. And well, once it's outside, it's outside. Yeah. It's, it's a major pain getting it. Oh, yeah, pain. totally. Yeah. But it was good when it was raining and all that stuff, and y'all were oh, doing yeah. the last little bits of stuff on it. Alright, so, uh, yeah, so what do you suggest? Do we look in it? Well, I've got a ladder we can pull up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's take a peek while we're here. And I got the car, and, you know, if I run out of camera, I got another one, so. After you. Oh my god, okay, here we go. Did you guys make this for an A26? No, it's just a regular fueling ladder at airports. Really? It's awesome. But the, really, the right way to get in is up the steps on the side here. Yeah, I know it, I know it. I'm going to have to wear my sneakers for that. I brought the manual, so my plan is to sit in it and read. Soak up the uh, so you just write down on the seat. So, yeah, uh, put it on the back of the seat there and onto the pad. Oh, my god, here we go. This has been a long time since I ever did this. Oh, my god, wow, pretty cool. Man, that's a lot looking back at you. We'll figure it out. Some of the stuff you obviously don't need, like all the where the bombs drop out and selecting the bombs and stuff. But we get a little bit more into it. We can do the. So what y'all do to hide the radios? So the radios are actually in front of you, just behind the control column. Oh, I see. Okay, right there. Okay. All right. So we got. We ended up with two. Uh, two. Yes, two radios, and you can switch yeah. in between, or you can do com both. So right. You can hear both radios at once. And then off to your left side, the transponder, right at your shoulder. Yeah, and, and it's got, got the hit that. And it's got the e, a, ATS. What is it? ADSB. ADSB. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, that'll, that'll give me two airplanes with ADSB. <laughs> so, anyway, awesome. Pardon the dust. We had a 40 mile an hour. Yeah. The storm that kicked up last night and it just coated. No, I, I I woke up this morning with the wind chimes outside uh, <laughs> playing a melody. All right, so that's pretty cool. So we've got the airspeed here. So the is there a white? So the the blue line is for the single engine. Correct. Man, I got to get back into the manual here. Is that flaps? The yellow? Uh, that is uh, flaps and gear. 
Okay, so as long as you're below that, you can start to knock right. them down. Can you go full flap at that speed, or you start quarter? Well, start you start, you start stepping it down. Right. Okay, but that's that's the gear speed too. Yeah, you've got, uh, I believe, there's 40 degrees of flaps on this airplane. What does it say? Oh, 38. Yeah. 38, and then yeah. beyond that. red line which they used to attack at. I thought it was 425 but it looks like 460 or something. That's, yeah that's higher than that's higher than 425. Wow. And of course it's got the when they first did the drop the bombs they'd open them up they dropped the bombs and because it was going so fast the bombs would float in the bomb bay so they had to put little three little fingers down you know to get the drift so it would get away from the airplane and then go. Well we don't need an extra nut there. Collecting dust. Took that out yesterday. Sticking, getting jammed. Now part of it is these old fiber nuts. They they dry out and they stop locking. So yeah. I've been replacing those as, those as we go. So is is there any kind of a uh, a pre oiler in this at all? There is. Yeah. Okay. Pre oiler switches are awesome. Right here. Okay, great. All right, great. Uh, I'm glad to see that. So when it sits for a while, you want to pump some oil through it. And Get them all. Okay, put the masters on. Cool. I'll top these back up to 200 as per uh, Steve Hinton's request. Okay. Cool. So is that? So it's got two main tanks that are 300 each. Correct. So that right there would give you, uh, you know, three hours of range plus a little bit left in the tank because they burn like 80 an hour. So and then. What do we got here? What are these? Are these aux tanks? Those are your the, left and right aux. And and is that in the bomb? Bag. Oh, the Bombay bag, and it's loaded 125. It's yeah, maximum and, it's 125. And where are these two tanks located? Uh, those two tanks are located inboard in the cell. Okay, okay. So the main 300 tanks are out uh, a little bit. They are in the nacelle. The oh, 300 gallons are in the nacelle. In the nacelle, mm -hmm. huh? Oh, that's cool. So above. And forward of where the landing gear is. Correct. Like yeah, okay. Cool. All right. So, in fact, if you go down there, you can see the liquidometer right there. Props, locks, mixtures, elevator trim, rudder trim is here, aileron trim is here, Bombay tank, got the main and the auxes. Okay, so how does, obviously we'll probably take off and land on the mains? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yep. And so then you get going, then what do you burn the aux off or you burn the... Uh, you can burn the, you burn the auxes off. Um, I mean, it necessarily doesn't matter as far as weight. Um, right. But they're both in the wing. Yeah, and th they look like they're all kind of on the same CG. Correct. Correct. Okay. So at that point, you burn them how you want. Yeah, well, you land and take off with mains. Yeah, but once you once you get off, try and burn out the aux tanks Correct. first, and then whatever. So so Steve's going to be flying with basically a little bit of fuel, nothing in the aux in the Bombay. Now, a little bit here just to keep it something in it, and then he's got and he wants two hundred in the deal. Okay, so that'd give him. Uh, he wants to make sure that the auxes are still feeding, even though we have verified that on the ground. He wants to verify yes. that in the air. Cool. And uh, it, which it, is why he's requested 50 yeah. per uh, And at some size. point, maybe in a later test flight, test the bomb bay too. If you want to. Yeah, I mean, just somewhere <laughs> down the road. I mean, does it works? Oh, it's, it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boost pump? Yeah, okay, go on. They work. Okay, so the bomb, here's the boost. So we got uh, left on the main. Oh, the auxes. Yes. Oh, the main, the Mains aux are out left. On the outside. Okay, right, aux, main. Correct. Yeah, okay, and the bomb bay take. That makes sense. Okay, so they're located on the wing. Bombay, the wing goes out, the auxes are inboard, Correct. and then the main tanks are outboard. Okay. And that is your emergency brake, which is uh, air. And those stencils, and uh, yeah. the, they're, they're water slides. So this whole panel here and this panel here, I'm going to redo. So over the years, the guys have dropped tools right. on it and scraped it up. So. Right. So, so I think I've got seven. So when you say cars. emergency, this is like uh, if you lose the hydraulics, if this is not a parking brake. No. no okay. That, uh, okay. And the parking brake is actually down on your left hand side. It's kind of hidden right by your cap. Yep. Okay. Push on, pull push it. Push on, let pull, okay. and let go. Correct. Okay. Um, this is air. So there's an air bottle, which back here you're going to see a pressure gauge. Yep. And that is 
throw air into the brake system, hmm. and therefore you've got three shots, and that's it. Yeah, okay, so you don't want it. You want to use it to stop and then that's have somebody you tow you in. To lock them up. Yeah, you're not going to taxi with it. Yeah, you're going to burn those tires. You're going to put a nice flat spot. So what's the difference between this hydraulic pressure gauge and this one back here? So that one is your accumulator pressure. So okay. that is just uh, nitrogen okay. that's above it. Okay, that's why I say you do it. So this gets set when you walk in, Correct. test it. Okay, so make sure. If you notice, once yeah. we're on system, you start building up hydraulic pressure, bam, yeah. it starts oh, from yeah. that nitrogen. Yeah, and From awesome. that charge, it starts cool. shoving fluid into the system. So there's oil cooler flaps and then I get, and they're separate from the cow flaps? Correct. So where are the oil cooler flaps? Down below? Cow, the oil cooler flaps are just out more than in the south, the bottom of the wing. And oh, on the bottom of the wing. Oh, I the saw wing. them. Yeah, okay. It's got that little thing there and it looks like a flap. Correct. Okay, because the oil coolers are in the wing. Correct. Yes, okay. they are in the wing. Okay. Um, earlier style A26s, they did have this gauge. Right. And this gauge is extremely hard to find. Wow. Uh, later style, they had an automatic switch. So both cow flaps and oil coolers are manual con control. So you have to look at the at your at your temperatures, right, and manually adjust them. Okay. Later, eight twenty six has had an automatic setting. I'll be darned. And you just left it alone. It operates and controls itself. Okay. Huh. And where are the cow flaps? The cow flaps. So the cow flaps are here. Okay. Oil coolers are here. Okay. Let's open the port ones over here. Okay, go fairly slow. Awesome. But I mean, basically flying, I mean, you're taking off with them open and you're landing with them. Well, you're yeah. landing them with them closed. With them closed, okay. Mm -hmm. But if you go around, then you got to get on them right away. You got to, yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, nowadays, you're, you're not going to be necessarily flying by yourself. You'll have help. Somebody will be sitting here with you, so if you can delegate some of that to the other guy, yeah, makes it easier. For yeah, yourself. yeah. As long as they know what they're doing. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Right. Wing flaps here. Okay. Carburetor. Right. Uh, air control. So full, this just full. basically goes down till you get what you want, and then you go back to neutral. Correct. As far as reading the gauge. Right. So. They electric. They're electric. Okay. Most of this aircraft is electric, besides okay. the brakes and the uh, Bombay. All right. Well, we'll get operated. all the, you know, I brought the manual with me, and I'll plan on reading that while I'm sitting in here, maybe this afternoon or something, just to kind of get going. Well, and I, you, you want know, to run it this afternoon. Oh, yeah, yeah. That oh, that'd be great. And, and you know, one of my plans is, because I haven't flown multi-engine Warbird in a long time, is to, uh, you know, do a bunch of flying in the Princess over there and maybe, you know, get a couple, three hours or three flights and land and just get to feel, ride with Steve at some point, you know, and, you know, just to be as safe as I can. I mean, I got a type rate in here, but it's a single pilot airplane, so th I just need to make sure that I'm safe. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and Princess is ready to go if you decide to do that. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, cool. So, Carb air, where's the carb heat? Right here. The carburetor temperature is there. Yeah. Okay, got cylinder head temp. I, I can't remember when you like if you feather if you feather something in the air mm -hmm. uh, and then you know if you fly around for a little bit, what was it like one ninety five or something you want to get the, the, the head temp back up to before you before you you know you start it, getting more RPM? Yeah, so you're you, you I mean, start it and you let it idle idle yeah. at low power in the air until you yeah. have temperature and then you slowly bring that power back up so you're not uh, I just couldn't remember what the temp was, but it was been such a long time ago. Bruce uh, Bruce somebody checked me out of this thing when I bought it. <laughs> uh, for he used to you know, he knew uh, the guys that challenge. And when I, when I got here, I let uh, Carl and Tony go get a rating in it, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was kind of cool. So yeah, That's right. They, uh, well, cool. All right, feathering buttons here. Bags. Bagmaster. All this stuff is. All this stuff here. Oh, just uh, the Bombay. Uh, demolition. I uh, see. Government. Okay, so that's not, and where's the bomb? Okay. So the Bombay switch is here. Oh, it's just electric. Okay. And then if you, uh, for any reason, you 
you to jettison your bombs. You reach down here to your salvo switch. Yeah, salvo switch, okay. And you hit that yeah. with hydraulic pressure on the system, or with pressure on the system, what it'll do is it'll open the bomb bays first until it hits the switch. Yeah. Your red light will come on, and then from there it'll salvage, or uh, salvo whatever uh, armament you have in I'll the airplane, damned. and it'll just let it all go at once. Yeah, these days pretty much all we carry is watermelons. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so. Awesome. Well, cool, cool, cool. It's all original radios, like I think it's ADF um, or whatever. Man, it's, nobody uses this stuff anymore. Is that the uh, the uh, recognition? Correct. Yes. Okay. Those work. Oh my God! Cool. So what's the what's the switch on the left? So we got red, green, amber. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's the switch on the left here? Should be a light. Wh a white light. A white light. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, then there should be a push button for teeing. Oh yeah, so I, individual lights. I'm gonna have to brush up on my Morse code. <laughs> and and I know I do know how to say SOS. <laughs> I might be able to remember how to say shit. <laughs> <laughs> You got formation lights, the blue lights on top yeah. of the wing. Oh, and cool. throughout the top of the fuselage, those work as well. Huh. So you can ideally fly at night with somebody and they should be able to see you. Oh my darn. I do not plan on doing that anytime <laughs> soon. Thank well, you, this buddy. is so cool. I did not realize that the guns, you see, normally the when we had the originally had the glass nose up here with a bomb side, a guy crawled up there. But this particular airplane flew in France in like 1945 as the six gun nose, you know. So when uh, I bought the airplane, it had a glass nose on it, but they had put it on there to do a movie they wanted to do. And it never actually happened, but I think somewhere I might have got a script from somebody. But anyway, so they ended up, uh, you know, they had the glass nose on it. So I got there and when we started looking at it, we are like, oh my God, this is not a C, this was technically a B. Flew in World War II, flew in Korea, and it was interesting, there was no, um, there wasn't a lot of history on the squadrons, but this airplane was in it, and they, uh, there was really no artwork pictures. We couldn't find the exact artwork, so I thought, you know, it was an opportunity for me to uh, come up with my own, and since it had all these guns, not only in the nose, six guns, you got the two 50s in the top turret and the bottom turret, but you've also now got four twin packs. You got another eight under the wing, and so I've already honored my wife twice. She's the Piccadilly princess on the B-17. She's the Apache princess on the B-25, and now she's going to be the pistol packing princess on the A-26B. So that'll be pretty cool. Anyway, awesome. Oh man, cool. Well, let me go spend some time with Carl and, uh, you know, maybe at some lunch or something, we'll come back up. It'd be fun to run it. You know, maybe I get a camera outside. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, you know, Carl could run that or something. And I can either sit here or sit there or, you know, whatever you want to do. Well, since you're going to be the guy yeah, sitting yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you might as well yeah, do it awesome, great. Yeah. Also, just uh, for communication purposes, this is also a yep. push to talk transmit. Okay. This is also a push to talk transmit. Now, so what's the deal with the. So you can either use this one or, or this one? one? Yeah, because so, your left hand's going to be there, your right, right. hand's going to be on the throttles, and depending on right. which one you right. want to communicate with. So, how uh, how's the intercom work? So the intercom is a uh, squelch system, so it's a Sigtronics, which we hit up here. Okay, cool. So it's up out of the way, it's already on, you should be able to plug in your headset. Has anybody, tr so it's voice actuated? Yours is voice actuated for right. pilot, and the guy sitting here Pushes is a, a push to talk. Yeah, okay, that's cool. So that cool. way it doesn't pick up the background noise and you've got right. constant feed And then you can switch it on just, or off If there. it's off, then just the pilot's talking through the radio. Yes. Yeah, okay. That's cool. We've got two things there. And there's no nav in this thing at all. It's just strictly. It's strictly we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to put a GPS on my, you know. I don't, actually, everybody's telling me they're using a four flight these days. But uh, I do have a strap 
thing to my leg. Uh, yeah, you know, an iPad or a kinda, tablet. No, I got a, well, I do have a tablet. I'm, okay. I want to play with the four flight stuff. I haven't done a lot of cross country flying. I flew a Waco biplane back from Sedona, and it was pretty much a sectional and IFR down the roads, you that's, know. <laughs> so that's yeah, that's yeah, fun. That was good, and that was interesting. At the end of the, it's like a three part deal on my YouTube channel, and I got the end blah blah blah, and it says blah blah blah, and it says you know how many miles and how many stops and how many hours, <laughs> and then at the end it goes by road by <laughs> because road. because we're going to, anyway pretty cool <laughs> awesome man super so so when did you get involved in in this from the beginning uh, or uh, not from the beginning no there's been a lot of guys working on this airplane right. throughout the years and they've come and gone yeah um and now for the past uh for the, i've been here six years maybe seven um and i've been one of the main guys on it since that awesome. time uh, there, like I said, there's a couple guys who've come and gone. Uh, Mark Moody was another guy that was yeah. working on this with me, and uh, and since he retired, it's just been me. Awesome. Well, I I mean, you know, I think it's awesome if Steve goes flying, man. You sound like the guy to go over there and help him and sit here and feel like you have uh, can partake in the success of the accomplishment that you guys have all done here, so I appreciate that. Yes, sir. You know, I, I can get some I can get some video from the outside, and when everything seems to be running good and stuff and all that, you know, then I'll, I'll jump up with Steve or something, maybe to go to a couple of flights. I know at some point Michael Leary wants to do a photo flight for oh, Air Classics. I, he was my date for the Living Legends pre-party. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, th I think Mike may be out in the next day or two, so. Anyway, you know, and we'll see. it be nice to see this thing in Oshkosh, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Cool. All right. Super, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely. <laughs> Get out of here. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Of course, that goes down. Oh man, that's the Bombay right there, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh my gosh. So can you actually walk on, go back to the back that I've way? I've tried it, and it, it, it uh, once once the valve is neutral, right. it locks that hydraulic pressure. Ideally, you can go to and from. Oh my God, I wouldn't want to do that if the pilot was pissed at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, and one of these days, I gotta figure out how to get in up the ladder, the side, you see the step down there in the land gear, uh, nose gear door, when you come up this way. Oh my god, oh my god. What's the stainless for here? Uh, it's for the, when the guns are rotated forward. I see, for flash protection? Correct. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. And he was saying, oh I see the blue formation lights, okay. I'm seeing that now, one, two, Three. You got both three on each wing. Fabric ailerons. Formation light here at the stainless. The stainless strip. Yeah. One just aft of the turret. Yeah. Another one on the fuselage. Mm -hmm. Why does it appear the flaps are? Dr is that is that the way they made those? No, no. So since I actuated the flaps earlier and put them in the I down see position, they dropped a they, little bit. Yes. I see, but normally they would. They're nice. And they're flush with the. I the see. Wing. Okay. Cool. Good. Of course, the gunner sits back there, and uh, is that just a vent, the the hole there? Or? Oh no, that's um, so that's the emergency access handle. So you, so you can push that in, there, and you can rotate the handle to open that hatch from the outside. From the outside, for emergency purposes. I see. But normally, the guy would just go out the left, out the uh, the door, out the hatch there. Yes. There's also another cutout on this side. I've yet to paint the red outline, but you can see there is a removable panel on yeah. the side of the fuselage. Yeah. They would use that for a camera, but also that section, in case of an emergency, you cut that section out to get the gunner. I'll be darned. Unbelievable. Well, ah, cleaning up sagebrush. Oh my gosh. Some snow up on top of the mountains there. Pretty cool, and that's the uh, that's the Pacific Princess. Yeah, see it. Yeah, I got it. Anyway, pretty cool. So right now the engines have got five minutes of air time, and you know. Yes, five yeah. minutes of air time, and probably about an hour on the ground yeah, each okay, side. Good. good. Okay. Well, we'll at least do some running while we're here. 
awesome. I hope this does not. Oh yeah, it should be okay. I should have gone around back the other way. Okay. And that's the way you get up right there. Okay, so left foot there, right there, right hand here, right foot. Another little step there. Nathan, have you, uh, I can demonstrate that or you can try it yourself a little uh, later. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a little later we'll do that. That'd be cool. Oh my God. I used to be a gymnast. <laughs> and of course, this is all, this is not, this is aluminum. To take a deflection this way with a bullet, it wasn't designed for a straight on, for a straight on which would be like armor plate steel or whatever. Correct. But this is all, you know, kind of wood here that so, actually. Yeah, so this actually got painted over. So I'm, I'm going to be in the process of stripping this paint off as it was supposed to be just wood. So that ac accidentally really? got painted over, correct. Yeah. Because uh, you got to yeah. think, this airplane was bare metal when it left the factory and there was no paint on it. So when they put the wood strips on, the wood strips are bare. Really? I'll be darned. You know, I have a question because I asked Jerry about this and I asked Carl too. Who, I guess it doesn't really matter. I mean, who, who actually did this? Because if this would have been doped, this all should have tightened up. It should have been, it, it should have been tightened up. Um, yeah, because ideally what I would have wanted to have done was had the artwork go back slightly more and make it a little bigger. But because of that, we, we could, I didn't want our face in the deal there. It, it so, came well, out fine. The, the fabric strip, they've at, they, they put them on in World War II. Yes, exactly. There was one there yeah. and there's one at the production break at the tail to yeah. prevent air from getting inside. Right. Yeah, and they were caught it just looks like it got put on, but it just didn't like, if it was dope properly, it would have tightened that up more, I would have thought, but whatever. I'll be darn cool. That's a, one of the ejection chutes. Another one there, another one there. Oh yeah, because they got more on one side than the other. Cool. And the nose is also interchangeable with the armament packet. So you can have four 50 caliber machine guns on this side, and a 37 millimeter cannon here. Oh, really? Or you can have a 37 millimeter and a 37 millimeter cannon. Oh my God. Or two but, but, caliber machine guns. But with this nose? With this nose. Oh, with this nose. Mm -hmm. The eight gun nose is just strictly 50 caliber machine guns. Right, That's it. yeah. But this this nose here, you can change it anywhere between 50 caliber machine guns to 37 millimeter cannon or a 75 wow. millimeter cannon. Oh my God. Huh, we got any of those laying around? <laughs> well, yeah. So here's the, uh, in the nose gear, and you can see what happens when they drop the bombs originally, they would float in there because the airplane was going so fast that they put these, when you drop the bomb doors, these three things hang down and uh, basically disrupt the airflow. So where it's turbulent, the bombs fall far enough that when they get out here, they keep going. So pretty cool. Uh, Pretty cool deal. Yeah, so you pop the flaps slightly. And you can see how they dropped here. So pretty cool. Who is this guy and this cute girl?